Great, I'm here with uh, Tahir Bashir from uh, Sheridan. So hi Tahir and thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. And we continue our series of uh, shows uh, talking about uh, uh, companies and uh, specifically funding for this couple of segments. So we continue from uh, the previous segment and we're talking about uh, how important it is for a company to uh, uh, incorporate itself and also uh, take care of the shares and ownership side of things for the company. Um, but I also want to talk about uh, you know getting the books in order. Uh, how easy, how difficult is it for a new company to really make sure that they, their books are top-notch and they are uh, good to go for investors? Uh, it's not difficult. It's just a, um, a matter of organization and uh, educating yourself a little bit. M most, most companies will have an accountant who will help with, the, with the setting out the statutory books. Um, when you first set up the company, uh, you'll be issued with some statutory books and the lawyers can help as well in terms of uh, uh, the, the aspects around uh, completing board minutes, resolutions, etc. Yeah. It's important to get those books in order for a number of different reasons. One, um, because actually what it does is it, uh, it increases the value of the company. So what happens is um, when an investor comes on board, they'll carry out this so-called due diligence process, i.e. they need to know how the company's running, what are its assets, who's doing what. Um, and so if you've already sorted out your statutory books, your agreements, um, then it's an easier process for the uh, investor to look at that and give a, an accurate value. Yeah. If there are gaps, and these could be contractual gaps, it could be um, uh, uneasiness about a shareholder dispute, for example, yeah. then that gives the investor the ability to actually ask for a reduction in terms of their investment. Right. And looking at uh, one of the most important things that uh, investors will look at if they're investing in a new company is uh, uh, the intellectual property they hold. And so whether it's a record label and they hold a copyright, so whether it's a startup and they hold IP on specific technology, for example, how important is it to get that, technology, that, that IP registered and what are the best ways to do this in the UK specifically? Um, well, some IP is registrable and other IP is not registrable. So trademarks is registrable. Um, in the UK, at least, copyright's not registrable. It, it is in the States. So some of it is registrable, some of it's not. Um, in any kind of entertainment-related business, actually, the IP is one of the most valuable assets. And that can be the brand of the business through to, as you mentioned, the music business, uh, music uh, uh, industry businesses, copyrights are very valuable. So typically the types of deals that we get involved in in terms of investments around music related businesses tend to be around catalog acquisitions, publishing acquisitions, um, sales of digital service providers, those types of things. And the IP will be very important there. It's important to make sure that the company owns the IP. Right. So any trademarks are registered in the company. And also that there are good contracts in place particularly around copyrights, which show, and these are non-registrable rights, which show um, the length of time the copyrights are held, whether they're assignments, licenses, whether you can assign co copyrights over as part of a sale, um, and a number of these types of issues. Yeah, sure. And in, in, we, talk, we talk about uh, patents a lot, but that's a US side of things, I guess. Uh, what, what happens in the UK on that front? Uh, uh, patents are global. They're not okay, just great. US. So you have right. uh, European patents, UK patents, US patents. Patents in technology-led businesses uh, are the new, uh, almost kind of the new war front, if you think about it, because um, you know, some businesses are sold on the value of their patent. You know, a lot of people are talking about Nokia and the value of their patents when Microsoft took them over, and that being a big factor in, in that purchase. So patents, getting them registered, um, do a number of different things. Number one, it helps uh, maintain market share so you can get rid of your competitors etc but number two it also is an in, um, an income stream because you can license patents and get royalties off the back of them right. they tend to be of the IP the most expensive to register they tend to be quite a long process and very technical that's great well thanks so much and until the next segment thank you very much